Lesson 4 Water Safe for Drinking My dear children, we will learn the different methods of purifying water in this lesson so that we all may drink safe water, clean water. Let's move on to the lesson. Now the lesson begins with a little experiment and all throughout the lesson we will have small experiments to help us understand the different process of purifying water. The lesson begins by a little experiment which says take a glass half full of water, add a spoonful of sugar to it and stir it with a spoon. See what changes takes place. Now you repeat this experiment with each of the substance mentioned below. My dear children, now when you take a cup or any vessel and you fill it with water and then you are adding a spoonful of water to it and you are stirring it. You must have already done this at home before. What changes takes place? I am sure you know what happens. Now when you put sugar in the water, the sugar mixes up with the water. It gets dissolved. It's, it becomes one with the water. And can you see the sugar after that? No. Why? Because the sugar gets mixed up with the water. Now it is also said that each time you do this experiment, you need to wash the vessel, the container which you are using. And the same experiment should be done with different substances like common salt, honey, washing soda, powdered alum, sand, wheat, flour, sawdust, turmeric powder and some oil. Now, what do you see? When you mix one thing at a time, what happens and what is your observation? What did you see? Now, we saw that sugar, salt... Washing soda, alum. These things dis disappear in the water. That means it mixes in such a way that we cannot see them. That is called dissolving. They completely dissolve in the water. But the substances like sand, sawdust, turmeric, powder, oil, these substances do not disappear. They remain as they are. That means even after stirring, they do not get mixed up with water. Therefore, we say that these substances do not dissolve in water. So, when it is becoming one with the, with the water, when it gets mixed up nicely with the water, we say that the substance dissolves in water and when it does not get mixed up and it remains as it is even after stirring, we say that the substance does not dissolve, right? Now, what does this tell us? Some substances dissolve in water while some substances do not. So, it is not necessary that all substances should dissolve. Some may dissolve and some may not dissolve. So, you do this experiment and see it for yourself. Now, the substance which we were mixing, what happens? The substance that dissolves in, in water, as you know, it spreads in the water. And when salt dissolves in water, the water in the container becomes salty. When sugar dissolves in water, the water becomes sweet. Now, likewise, here we have a new term which says solution. Now, what is a solution? When a substance dissolves in water, a mixture of that substance and water is formed. This mixture is called the solution of that mixture. Now, for example, if a person has got loose motions, now you can see on the screen, there is a person who is not well. He is sick and he is sleeping on the bed. Now, if a person has got loose motions and we give them a solution of salt and sugar to drink, correct? This solution is called as ORS or Oral Rehydrating Solution, okay? It 
rehydrates the body that means the loss of water is covered up is made up so because of dehydration the patient loses water from the body right and so a solution of salt and sugar is given so that the person gains his or her strength back okay so that is rehydration solution right now this patient in the hospital sometimes is put on saline that means you can see a bottle there hanging and through the bottle there is something pinned on to the hand of the patient okay right now that is on a solution of salt saline means a solution of salt which is in water this is called as saline sometimes other medicines are also given through the saline with the saline there are different medicines also which is given to the patient so these are examples of useful solutions right now do you know sea water is salty to taste of course you all know this because when we go to the seashore you must have by mistake coincidentally come across the waves which hit on you and sometimes the water goes into your mouth and you know that it is salty right why is it salty because it is nothing but a solution of salt and it is occurring naturally in nature that is it is made by god so we cannot use this water sea water is not good for drinking because it is salty now water of different wells we know in the previous lesson we have learnt about the different sources of water right and we had also learnt about wells now different well water tastes different why is that so now what happens is when the well is dug in the ground there are some substances in the ground that gets mixed up with the water so those substances they dissolve in the water mixed up means dissolve and because of this the water gets the taste of the substance that is dissolved in the water but if there is nothing dissolved in the water then the water has no taste so we have learnt in our lower classes water does not have color or taste now the next point when we remove the lid of a soda water bottle you must have seen this when you take out a soda water bottle and you remove the lid what happens bubbles comes out and it comes out with a fizz now to make soda water there is a gas called carbon dioxide which is dissolved in water we saw how salt is dissolved uh, then sugar is dissolved and so many other substances were dissolved in water now to make soda water what is dissolved a gas called carbon dioxide is dissolved under pressure now when the lid is removed or the pressure cooker you have seen mummy cooking in the kitchen again when the lid of the pressure cooker is removed what happens the pressure reduces and the gas bubbles out so this is all the things that you have seen around you keep observing and try to learn many things by observing also now yet again we have another simple experiment now what is it and what are we going to learn from this experiment here it is said fill a large container with water okay and then you collect the following articles all these articles given here are things which you have in your house what are these articles now from your compass box you have a plastic ruler an eraser a pencil a sharpener a rubber band the compass now in your house you have a steel spoon a plastic spoon some groundnut shells an iron nail a screw a coin all these things from your house and from outdoors that is out of your house stones little twigs leaves and soil now what are we supposed to do put all these things in the water and see whether each of them sinks or floats you know what is the meaning of sink sink means right to go down into the bottom of the vessel and to float means to remain on the surface on the top part of the water or any liquid now after putting all these things inside the water what do you see now the eraser sharpener steel spoon nails screw stones coins the compass and the soil sink in the water 
but the other things that we had put like uh, the uh, plastic ruler right the rubber band what happens to it it floats on the surface that means what is this experiment telling us it tells us that heavy things sink that is they go down to the bottom but the lighter things they float in water right so the things that float are lighter than water the things that sink are heavier than water this is what we learn from this experiment try this yet again there is an experiment for you and i believe you are enjoying because you can do all these experiment at home now here there is an experiment which says take some muddy water in a beaker what is a beaker you can see there on the screen so there are beakers which are placed and here they are asking us to have muddy water in a big beaker right and if you don't have a muddy water you can just add some mud and water and it becomes muddy right you can add some soil and that becomes muddy right now after adding uh, mud and making the water muddy you can just add some pieces of dry twigs straw leaves to this water you can add some other things as well and you allow the beaker to stand still for 4 to 5 hours that means you keep it aside without touching it what do you see the particles of soil sink in the water and form a layer or sediment at the bottom what is happening the soil is going down to the bottom of the beaker and it forms a layer of sediment sediment means particles of soil okay they go down and they settle down to the bottom but the twigs and other rubbish floats on the water that means they remain on top it takes a long time for the sediment to form we have observed this right when you put this uh, soil uh, water mixed with mud it takes a long time for the soil to come down and settle down and form sediment what does this tell us particles of soil are heavier than water yes that is why it takes a long time to go down and settle but because they are very small they take a long time to settle to the bottom of the water leaves twigs etc are lighter than water and therefore they remain on top right now the water appears much cleaner and transparent than it was before so my dear children you can do this experiment and see it for yourself right now because the water was left untouched what happens the mud settles down and the water becomes clean than what it was before it's not very clean but much better than what it was before the process of allowing heavier particles to settle to the bottom of still water is called settling so this experiment what we did is called as the process of settling that is allowing heavier particles to settle to the bottom to come down to the bottom and rest at the bottom over there that is why this process is called as settling now without dis disturbing the sediment pour the water above into two smaller beakers now what happens you are doing yet another experiment with this water and you are pouring it into another beaker even though this water appears much cleaner than before as i told you when you settle it for some time the water looks much cleaner than the first water that you saw now why because there are still some fine particles of soil and some rubbish floating in it now carry out the following experiment using two beakers label them as 1 and 2 on the beaker you will write 1 and 2 and try to do this take a piece of alum and swirl it once in the water in the first beaker now you must be knowing if you have water filters in your house there is a white color substance which is there which uh, cleans water it is called as alum you can ask your mom to show it to you and you will understand it much better so take a piece of alum and swirl it that is mix it up in the water in the first beaker it is done and now leave this beaker undisturbed for 2 or 3 hours that means you don't touch it don't disturb it for 2 or 3 hours let's see what happens the particles floating in water slowly settles to the bottom 
so the particles what are they happening to the uh, particles which are there in the water it is settling down slowly and the water in the upper part becomes transparent that means all the dust particles dirt everything has gone down it has settled and the water becomes transparent and the twig and straw still keeps floating on the water what does this tell us it tells us that swirling alum in water helps the soil particles in muddy water to settle down so alum helps in settling in the process of settling yet another experiment my dear children so you can try all these experiment at home and enjoy yourself and learn by seeing as well take another beaker place a tea strainer over it you know what is a tea strainer when mummy prepares tea she strains the tea on the tea strainer so you place a tea strainer over it fold a piece of fine cotton cloth into four layers and then make it moist that is it make it wet and spread it over the strainer keep it over the strainer now pour the water in beaker 2 in a thin stream on the folds of the cloth now what will happen now you have poured this water let's see what happens the rubbish and soil particles remain on the cloth and the water collects in the beaker below now how is the water looking the water looks transparent why because already the alum has cleared the water and now because of the cloth which we have kept on top on the tea strainer all the rubbish particles are collected in that cloth now what does this tell us if we strain muddy water it helps us to make it clean right so this process that we did by straining on a tea strainer and cleaning water is called as filtration what is this process called it is called as filtration right now after doing this experiment throw the water into the soil and wash your hands with soap and clean water right all those who are going to try this experiment will do this for your cleanliness purpose now we have another new term over here portable water what is the meaning of portable water portable water means water which is safe for drinking now water that does not endanger our health in any way when we drink it is called safe drinking water or portable water right so we all love to drink water that is safe for drinking we should drink water which is safe clean and therefore we can avoid diseases now we have seen some methods of making muddy water clean and transparent however such water may still not be potable now you put alum you uh, try to filter it you try to settle the muddy water but still it is not fully clean it is not potable it is not safe for drinking now let's see what this the question asks to us in the rainy season the water of rivers and streams become muddy what why do we not drink this water a very good question rain is the main source of water then we feel we should drink rain water but then this water in the streams and rivers it is muddy right and then why do we not drink the water because it is not clean there is mud soil and other particles which gets mixed up with this water and it makes the water dirty impure unsafe for drinking right the next question when on an excursion that means when you go out on a purpose to learn something if you find that the water of a spring or well there has a bad smell would you drink it no not at all why because it may contain some germs and it can cause diseases you can fall sick and therefore you will not drink such water water safe for drinking that is potable water now drinking such safe water is good for health as i told you pure water has no taste no smell or color and if water has a color or a foul smell that is dirty smell we must avoid drinking it it can make us fall sick now when we get muddy water during the rains we allow it to settle before using it correct and another process is also done after settling 
if it is necessary we add alum right to filter the water as i told you in the previous experiments we put alum so that the water gets purified and then we filter it so these are the different methods of purifying water its muddiness disappears and the water looks clean and transparent when we add alum so can we say that it is now safe for drinking no it is still not safe for drinking because there may have be some germs in the water and it may cause some diseases now let us learn some more about this now here yet again we can see new terms have a look at it micro right you can see the word what is the meaning of it very very small organisms a living thing organisms means a living thing microorganisms a living thing that cannot be seen by the naked eye or even with a magnifying glass now you know naked eye means your own eye cannot see such organisms but because they are very very small and even a magnifying glass cannot help us to see them microscope an instrument for make uh, looking at very very small things which we cannot see with our eyes or even through a magnifying glass now in the next uh, uh, slide you will see uh, what is a microscope now here you can see there is a girl who is looking through a microscope the thing that she has on the table is called as a microscope and this microscope is an instrument which is used to see small objects which we cannot see with our naked eye right now if we take a bit of yogurt or a drop of buttermilk okay you know you love to eat many of you like buttermilk you like yogurt right you take it on a glass slide and place it on under the microscope you can see a glass slide on the microscope the child the girl has kept it over there and uh, she is trying to watch something there so if we keep a bit of yogurt or a drop of buttermilk on a slide and place it under a slide under the microscope we can see tiny living things in it they are called microorganisms as we saw in the new term micro means very small and organisms means a living thing so we can see some small microorganisms even in the yogurt or the buttermilk now these microorganisms they convert milk into yogurt you can ask mummy to ask her to show you uh, when she prepares yogurt how she does it she will show you how she puts a little yogurt in the milk and because this yogurt is put it converts the milk the entire milk gets converted into yogurt now these microorganisms are useful to us because they are helping us to get something good which we want but all microorganisms are not useful some microorganisms cause diseases when they enter our body they are said to be harmful microorganisms so there are good microorganisms as well as harmful ones so harmful ones cause diseases and we need to be careful about them now there are numerous kinds of microorganisms around us they are in the soil in the water in the air on rocks that is anywhere and everywhere so microorganisms are found everywhere even if harmful microorganisms are present in water we are not able to see them now though the water with such microorganisms looks transparent it would look safe for drinking clean but it is not safe why because they are harmful these microorganisms though you cannot see them with your naked eye what happens they cause diseases so during rainy season we often hear of an outbreak of diarrhea or gastritis now many people face problems during the rainy season such times we need to boil water because boiling is the safest way of purifying water now what happens when you boil the water that uh, the water is made clean by settling and filtration so boiling helps you to have safe water for drinking and the other process that we learned was settling and filtering as i just told you so only then does water become safe for drinking so there are different methods of purifying water 
and the best method to kill the microorganisms is boiling though we learnt about settling we learnt about filtering we uh, learnt how we can make water transparent by putting alum all these make the water clean but the best way to kill the microorganisms in the water is to boil the water and prevent diseases right now we'll use our brain power some substances do not dissolve in water yes we already know that there are many substances that does not dissolve in water in the beginning of the lesson we saw that uh, experiment so when you do your experiment you will see for yourself whatever doubts you have you put those things and see so that you understand whether those substances dissolves or not now what could be the advantage of this then you can see you can put the substances and you can see when it does not dissolve in water what is the advantage of that right you can one for example i'll give you one example of salt you put salt in water it dissolves in water can you take it away from the water again you cannot separate it right but if you put uh, a huge thing like a compass or a pencil falls in the water you can remove it from the water safely right and you can get it back also now what's the solution here they they have given you a question and they are asking you what is the solution now this is also one of the activity you are going to do mother had bought some cumin seeds that is jeera from the shop but some sand got mixed with it mother wants the jeera seeds cleaned now what are you going to do to clean it this is an experiment that you are going to do at home and find out what is going to happen how are you going to do it right now we just revise before ending the lesson yes some substances dissolve in water some substances do not yes some things float in water some sink and settle at the bottom in order to obtain clean water muddy water is allowed to settle after settling the water is cleaned further by swirling alum in it or by filtration even in clean transparent water microorganisms can be present it is necessary to have safe water for drinking so water must be boiled to destroy any microorganisms in it now always remember even such tiny living things like microorganisms which our eyes cannot see have great importance in our life thank you